Okay. So now something that you are so passionate about is the inequality when it comes to breastfeeding and, you know, uh, people of color, um, when it comes to, I know you talked about how families of color, when they leave hospitals, the chance that they keep up with breastfeeding, it decreases. So let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Like what are the issues we're currently seeing and what can we do to help? What can people watching this do to help and how can we, you know, become more aware of it? So the issue I'm currently seeing is um, a couple of things. One is the initiation um, rate. So it's latched. We latch, we get them to latch. Usually how we get them to latch is up for debate, um, nipple shield, whatever the case may be. But the latch typically happens, honestly, in the hospital setting. And then once, you know, folks of color leave the hospital, Within six weeks, maybe, they decided they no longer want to breastfeed anymore. And I find that really interesting when it comes to comparing their percentages to other races. And when I say people of color, I'm specifically talking about um, non, uh, non-Hispanic non Black folks and Black folks. Um, so that's the one thing I'm noticing. And then the other thing I'm noticing is access, right? I have a love-love relationship with spaces like WIC. Um, but I have a hate kind of relationship with it as well, because I know that <sighs> these spaces become so overcrowded, which is another thing to tap into, but these spaces become so overcrowded and we honestly just want baby to be fed and let's just do this thing. And so we usually push things without realizing we're pushing things, including from the hospital setting. They latch, but there's still a WIC consultant in there that stays sometimes longer than the actual consultant to talk to you about how to sign up for WIC. Here you are, here's this bag full of things or whatever the case may be. Um, so I have this relationship with it. I'm not really sure where I want to go with it, but that's what I'm finding. The push on formula is completely, completely different. The percentages is way huger and the initiation rate is there, but once we leave, it tremendously drops. And so I'm finding again that it's access. So here in Alabama, there are a lot of holes, right? There are a lot of spaces that doesn't have a lot of access to a certain type of care in a lot of different ways. Um, but we're talking about medical right now, you know, care when it comes to women and women's health and infant health. And so access to care, like something like the postpartum clinic or something as simple as a CLC working on our own as a doula or what have you, it's very rare and it's especially rare if that person is of color and that person can understand the race and why it's so important to go into certain neighborhoods or it's so important to have certain conversations. It's so important to use certain language. It's so important to use certain marketing. Those are the things that's happening. Those are the things I'm noticing. The access here is just not as great as it probably should be. Uh, and that goes for a lot of things, but that's what I'm noticing. And inequalities is really, really unfortunate to me in my humble opinion, just an opinion y'all because we want to do what's best for our children. We want to do what's best for our kids. We want to do what's best for us. But oftentimes, again, I'm going to keep repeating it, access is not available. So that means support is not available. That means that community is not happening. And when those things aren't happening, how are we really uplifting um, our women? How are we really, you know, pushing for women to become healthy, pushing for healthy infants? How are we really combating the things that us working in, um, you know, maternal mental health or maternal health in general are trying to combat. So mm -hmm. that's what's happening. That's what I'm seeing. I'm working really hard though, again, with like the research and working with other folks, trying to figure out ways where maybe we can change some protocols. Maybe we can help with the education of providers and help with popping up some clinics or something <laughs> to help um, the majority. Again, I can only speak from Alabama, but help with the majority of Alabama who happen to be folks of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you also, in regards to that, you, you do a lot for low income families as well and give them lactation support. So what do you kind of do in this realm and how do you, you know, bring it to their attention and kind of like, I guess, market to them? I don't know if that's the right word, but, you know, let people know um, what you're offering. Market could be a word. I guess it just all depends on what context you're using it, but it, it can be the word. How I started out really um, paying attention and honing in on communities that were lower with income is actually I started out helping out with a support group um, located in North Alabama called Coloring Between the Lines. And that support group, the amazing, amazing, amazing birth worker and woman that was running it at the time decided this is too much for me. Um, there was a lot of racial impact for her. And so I said, okay, yeah, sure, I'll take it, <laughs> take it over. And so I kind of created it into a nonprofit and that's kind of how it's starting right now. And so basically I, I found that A, from those women, and then B, because of the pandemic, because it's kind of maybe a few months, no, I want to say maybe 
close to six months before the pandemic hit, I took over and really shifted the way that things were happening. I started to notice that I really didn't have to market. All I needed to do was create the access. All I needed to do was create the space, a space that didn't feel like it was a little corner, a space that didn't feel like it was a little section within some of these nonprofits that were like for black folks. Like if I just created the access and created the space, just like it was anything else because it should be and it is, mm-hmm. it, it'll just, it'll reach the people that needs to reach. We're up to 200 plus women now um, that we help when it comes to education. And so we do that through um, support groups. Of course, everything has been virtual literally for almost a year. Everything has been virtual. I don't even let them come out of house during winter break, winter break, during winter, um, <laughs> because I don't want anyone coming out of house during winter because of flu, because babies, because breastfeeding, all that. So we usually do all virtual during that time let's it's like a, a special pop-up or something anyways but because of all this like we have been virtual for the last year so support groups monthly support groups monthly mommy meetups monthly community um breastfeeding classes and they're just basic classes where i give you basic information sometimes it changes up sometimes it doesn't it really just depends we have a jet class a noir class and an onyx class and those are all different ways to say the word black and they are all different classes based off of where you are in your breastfeeding journey so when you create a space that feels like you. Uh, I didn't wear my shirt to say what it says my lactation counselor is black. Like imagine what someone could think and how they would feel if they're not used to seeing you and then they see you and then you create this space where it's like, oh yeah. And people were so excited. They were like, oh yeah, I'm going to take the Onyx class. When you just make a space feel like a, a space that's accessible and it's warming and inviting and you don't feel like you have to be in the corner of that breastfeeding class in the hospital because you're the only black person it really does wonders so that's kind of how i stayed into helping low-income um, folks when it came to lactation started when i was in california when i was helping low-income um, foster youth um, mm-hmm. as a birth doula a volunteer birth doula oh, so it started then and that was like years and years and years ago and I saw what was happening there, which was really interesting to me. It was through the um, Joy and Birthing Foundation. They're still, they're still thriving to this day. And I'm like, yes. But that's how all of that started. And then it just kind of trickled into coming here and doing it with the more lactation foundation. 